Welcome viewers to a brand new episode here on Semiconductor Investing and More. Today we're going to take a closer look at a company that just reported earnings and seems to be doing really, really well. Uh, Supermicro Computer. This is a company that Billy has brought to us many months ago. Uh, many moons ago. Um, I, I think we talked about it a, a many podcasts ago, right, Billy? Yeah, I've been um, sort of pounding the table on this company for a while. So I'm going to be doing a victory lap today, and it will probably be very insufferable and highly annoying to all of you, but I don't care. <laughs> So, yeah, so for today's episode, we are going to take a closer look at Super Micro Computer and their earnings. Um, I, I do want to say, even if you don't own this stock, they do share a lot of insight of other companies, especially, I, I mean, I'm personally and not a shareholder, Billy, but I'm a shareholder of some of the advanced companies like AMD and NVIDIA. And reading through their earnings call gets me even more excited about kind of those companies. So I'll send it your way so you can kind of share what happened during earnings. And then maybe we can discuss a little bit more later on. Right. Great. So Supermicro reported uh, yesterday on May 2nd after close. Um, the headline earnings numbers did not look good. But the company had already pre-announced that it was going to fall short of his expectations. However, that was purely, the company said, because of supply constraints, not that demand was falling, which is an important distinction. So um, the stock kind of sold off a little bit when it had pre-announced. And I guess investors were sort of waiting to see whether their next quarter guidance was going to be you know, better because those unfulfilled orders would then get moved into the current quarter. And that apparently was the case. So uh, third quarter revenue, their uh, third quarter ends in March was a uh, 1.28 billion down 5.9%, which was in line with expectations. Earnings per share was actually up 5.2% from the prior year. That was a miss, but again, people didn't really care about that. It was all about the guidance for their fiscal fourth quarter ending in June, they projected 1.7 billion to 1.9 billion in revenue. So that is like a 50% quarter over quarter increase in revenues. So uh, that did apparently uh, satisfy the market uh, with adjusted EPS of 221 to 271. And that was above what uh, analysts had modeled. Uh, moreover, management said that guide was still a bit conservative in their mind because, well, they had solved a lot of supply shortages. I guess they left a little bit of conservatism in case um, the, some supply shortages continued in the current quarter. However, um, CEO Charles Liang said he still expects at least 20% growth in fiscal year 2024. Wow. Uh, and I think this year they're going to wind up doing in the mid 30% growth range. So this company is growing 30% this year and 20% next year when a lot of chip companies are reporting negative uh, revenue growth or flat, not very spectacular growth amid all the economic headwinds. Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick five-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join the private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Uh, so why is that? Uh, it's In short, it's because of artificial intelligence. Um, the company noted that... Um, uh, uh, there's a big shift, very high demand for AI, GPU, accelerated systems this quarter, even as other types of systems were sort of, there was soft demand. 
So that miss, it was even more than management thought they said. So that caused a bit of a mismatch in terms of supply. So I guess these are the advanced chips from, they could be the NVIDIA H100. It could be uh, the latest Intel and AMD chip. It could be some other component of advanced systems. Uh, they didn't really specify. Um, but they did say, you know, these new advanced systems have some parts in short supply. And uh, Super Micro Computer is very embedded with NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. Uh, they're based in Silicon Valley. They've been a longtime partner. Um, they're often first to market with um, the latest servers um, that these, uh, with the latest, uh, most advanced chips, which are the most in demand. So it's perhaps not surprising to see that sort of exploding uh, growth. Um, one interesting thing. Yeah, so the high growth AI GPU rack scale solutions, it's like their complete deluxe latest and greatest um, total system solutions um, accounted for about 29% of revenues this quarter, and that's up from about 20% last quarter. So that's, you know, about a fifth of their business, but it's growing obviously much faster than the rest of their uh, server business as well. Um, one interesting thing is that they do expect, even though revenue is going to tick up nicely in the current quarter, they expect gross margins to come down a little bit towards 17% um, temporarily. Um, and this is because they're trying to gain, they're trying to capitalize on their position in the AI market and gain market share with strategic new customers and platforms. However, <coughs> excuse me. However, um, as they improve their production efficiencies on the new platforms and gain scale, they expect those gross margins to improve. Uh, the company has a new manufacturing plant in Taiwan and another one coming up in Malaysia, in addition to their Silicon Valley and Netherlands uh, headquarters, uh, Silicon Valley headquarters and their Netherlands plant. So it looks like they're really um, being aggressive with pricing because they think the opportunity is so big, which uh, I guess is bullish if you can handle a bit of gross margin compression. Um, company's still obviously pretty profitable um, with that guide. Uh, of note, they also repurchased uh, over one and a half million shares last quarter, which was interesting because the company hadn't really repurchased any stock for a while because they had to, they were growing so fast um, over the last year or so that they had to spend all their cash flow basically on ramping up inventory because demand was so high. And that took a lot of uh, their operating cash. But since they've gotten to this new level, uh, the cash flow is starting to come through. They had a huge amount of cash flow, uh, like, uh, almost four dollars in cash flow, because um, I guess they sold a lot of through their inventory. Um, so that allowed them to repurchase stock. Looks like they bought back about two point nine percent of shares outstanding, a little bit below a hundred dollars a share. So I think that confidence, combined with the strong guidance and the enthusiasm for AI, is what propelled shares. I guess shares were up almost thirty percent today, uh, to a new all-time to smokes, a new yeah. all-time high. And the stock trades about uh, twelve and a half times earnings still, so not terribly demanding. Uh, for a high growth AI stock, um, server stocks tend to get very low multiples in the business. Um, if you look at Dell or HPE, I think they trade at single digit multiples, but they're not growing anywhere near as much as Supermicro. And actually, Jose, if you go to the next slide, you can uh, see I, I attached a couple slides from their presentation here. So that uh, green line there is Supermicro's growth rate, and the blue line is the rest of the industry. And you can see since 2021, uh, Supermicro has just taken off, like way above the industry taking mm -hmm. market share. Uh, with total solutions, their rack scale, 
for um, AI, mass customization, and their green computing. Uh, so if you haven't tuned in for previous shows, these guys differentiate themselves by one, fast time to market with the latest chips, uh, two, the ability to customize servers for specific applications. So they don't have, they have a modular building block architecture for their servers, which allows them to make a uh, highly specific application specific server. So they don't really have any standard models. They have this building block architecture. And number three, um, highly energy efficient design. As we all know, AI computing takes a ton of power, produces a lot of heat. Um, so Supermicro's longtime focus on energy efficiency and liquid cooling is definitely paying off. So those three things are really combining to um, accelerate their growth. And then this slide on the right side, you can see uh, that's for their entire history. Uh, management likes to divide it up into the 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 eras. Uh, when they went from just selling components to selling complete systems to now selling basically total IT solutions. Um, so whole, not just individual servers, but whole racks of systems with uh, software services, uh, switches, security, uh, and more. So um, really impressive uh, guidance anyway. Uh, they had a supply hiccup and um, uh, this is a company I've, I thought was very cheap for a long time and it's uh, <laughs> doing even better than I expected. So that's a good combination. Um, the stock actually almost doubled in 2022 when the tech, when the NASDAQ was down 30% and it's up, I don't know, another 60, 75%, I guess this year. So uh, these guys are, might be the best AI stock around. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Billy. I mean, w w I, I took a closer look at their earnings call. I read the transcript, and there were a few things that really caught my attention. Uh, first, like you mentioned, one of the things that they were really proud of is kind of their not just turning around the system where some of their competitors might take months, they might do it in a few weeks. Um, I, I was kind of curious to hear about that shortage. I know they kept talking about it. They did give a vague answer. They were saying that they're seeing shortage in three of their main components. It was the GPU, the CPU, and also, like you mentioned, they're really focused on power efficiency. So the liquid cooling components for liquid cooling um, were, were some of the shortage that they were seeing. They didn't really give an, a, a, a I guess a true answer there, um, but it is pretty impressive. Um, another thing that I did hear was because of this AI push that we're seeing right now, one of their existing customers actually ended up joining the 10% uh, customer line. Um, so it, we, we're definitely seeing a nice amount of kind of demand from the AI market. And they mentioned that this was the first quarter where they released their some new AI generation products that included the H100, like you mentioned, and video, uh, Intel Sapphire Rapids. Uh, so it's still in early innings here of the AI rush. And I, I, I saw one of the slides that they have that for future generation or for future product growth, um, we're coming out with or... or Advanced semiconductors are coming out with, uh, for example, NVIDIA is coming out with their gray CPU, with their gray GPU as well. Uh, so those are also kind of going to help push some of the market growth here. Um, so interesting. Uh, like, I, I, I mean, I don't own the company, but hearing we're seeing a lot of push for servers that include GPUs. Um, normally, most servers back then used to be sell, uh, sold um or the majority is still mainly CPU only. Uh, so it, it's great to see now more, more GPU servers also being sold as well. Um, I think this is really good news overall. Um, the only thing that, that worries me, Billy, is just like anything, I mean, it's not just a super micro thing, but it's, it's just the overall market. We're seeing this huge demand for AI, but what happens when companies come, come out and, and stay hey, you know what? We probably ordered too many servers. Let's kind of slow down on these purchasing. Um, any thoughts on how you're handling your shares right now, Billy? Do you, after this kind of roundup, are, are you planning, maybe not doing it, but maybe are you kind of contemplating, maybe kind of trimming? What are your thoughts right now with, with share, with the current share price? Yeah, good question. <clears throat> um, 
I'm actually undecided. I am thinking potentially of trimming. On the other hand, not very expensive still. <laughs> and we are at the mm -hmm. early stage of this AI game that, um, you know, it's the beginning stages and this company still trades at less than third time, 13 times earnings. Yeah. And at least management is very, seems very confident uh, that it can grow to 10 billion and be, I think uh, trailing 12 months revenues is like 7 billion or something. They think they can easily get to 10 billion. And then the CEO has said he wants to hit 20 billion at some point in revenue. So um, they talk a big game, but they seem to be backing it up. I do have big gains in this stock. Um, I've actually owned it for a couple of year, a few years. So um, I am thinking about trimming, but by no means uh, that would be reluctantly and not selling out of the position entirely it just might be a little bit more portfolio rebalancing because there's a lot of stocks that are down a lot <laughs> as well. And this stock's up a lot. So on the other hand, you don't really want to sell your winners too early. So that's a long way of saying I'm undecided. Um, I've actually <laughs> some, sold some calls against my position that at higher, at even higher valuation. So it might even get called to me, but, um, you know, uh, in terms of AI, uh, I, that that one sir, that one customer you mentioned, they said it was a cloud service provider who is now a ten percent customer for the first time. So I'm wondering if it's one of the big three, um, you know, mm -hmm. Amazon, Microsoft, Google. Um, I think uh, Meta was actually a huge customer of theirs last year. So they had one customer that was like twenty percent at one quarter a few quarters ago, and then it went back down to under ten percent. So there was one big customer that had a huge surge of orders. I, there was speculation that was meta when they were building out their um, AI recommendation engine. Supercomputer. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know that for sure. They didn't really disclose that. Um, so, I mean, I think the biggest danger is actually like government regulation <laughs> stopping this AI race because... Obviously, you got the big three cloud guys that are all going to invest in it. And, uh, you know, the new the capabilities of ChatGPT unveiled last November seems to have kicked off this kind of new era um, that seems to be the real deal. It seems to be the real deal more than other past hypes like NFTs and alt alternative crypto. Yeah, I'm surprised we're still talking about it. <laughs> um, no, this is, I think this is the real deal. I mean, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. And, you know, it's still a re relatively reasonably priced uh, stock here. So, um, yeah. yeah, hard to know what to do. It's very, it's a very yeah. dynamic time, yeah. shall we say. That's why you get these huge moves. Definitely. One way or the other. I mean, Jose, you and I were talking, about, and Jose, it, you and I were talking about before we started that I think like in the prior quarter, the stock fell like 10% when it was like 30, when it was like in around 70 and then like immediately yeah. like shot up 25% after it went down for 10%. So <laughs> the, this is a very volatile stock and it's a very sort of dynamic um, market, but uh I, if I had to bet, I would say the AI wars are closer to the beginning than the uh, end. The, definitely, Billy. Uh, I think that's actually a great way to end this segue.